What are Julie's seven R's of eco-organizing? I know you're gonna ask me and the answer is, short answer, it is your game plan for the rest of the year for organizing your home. I know, super exciting. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now it is with joy that I bring to you this show, Ask a House Cleaner. And if you have a question and you would like to get it answered, go to askahousecleaner.com. And right there in the corner is a blue button. You click on the blue button and a little microphone appears. You just start talking to me and it brings your message to me here at the show. When I get your questions, I'm able to go and find other experts if I don't know the answer myself and I get to bring them on the show. And today we have with us one of those experts that's joining us on the art of organizing. And this is Julie Caraccio from Reawaken Your Brilliance. And what is exciting about this is she is a returning guest back by popular demand because when she came and joined us before, you guys loved her and said, bring her back, please. So she's joining us to, again today with Julie's seven R's of eco-organizing. Please help me welcome Julie Caraccio. Thanks for having me. I'm Julie Caraccio and I'm in the same state as you in North Carolina, just a little bit of south of Raleigh, although I work with people all over the world. I'm super excited that we're talking about eco-organizing today. When I first started my business in 2009, I went out to, with a woman in network and the first thing out of her mouth was, I hate organizers. Now, normally I would have run away, but I asked the question, why? And we ended up having this amazing conversation about how you can incorporate green principles in organizing. Well, I'm really excited that you're on the show today because there are a lot of people as we start the new year that are all excited about doing their part this year. This is the year that kind of defines everybody. It's the beginning of a new decade. And as we all move forward, the earth is not getting more friendly without our help. And so I'm super excited that we're having this conversation. And I know that you have seven R's of eco organizing. So I wanna hear what they are. So the first one is reduce. What do I mean by this? One term that I use is clutter kryptonite. Be aware, what is your clutter kryptonite? Like Superman, you see it in the store and it makes you weak in the knees and you must have it. For me, it's leopard print. I got on leopard print earrings today. So I've learned to say, okay, take a deep breath. Do I really need that? And in general, just reduce it, whether it's reducing and buying your clothes, whether it is reducing your collections, figure out buying less food. If you're buying those 10 for 10 deals at Kroger, maybe you have an army to feed, but maybe you don't and you've got a pantry full of clutter because it never gets used. Right, what's your next one? Is reuse. Now, it's also known as upcycling now. And this is where you can have a lot of fun. It's taking what you have and figuring out how can I get another use out of it? If you get magazines, for example, can you take them to the senior center where the seniors might not have a subscription and they're really going to appreciate that? Or maybe the Girl Scout troop or the Boy Scout troop is doing a vision board or something like that. And then you get another use out of it. You can take things like, oh, packaging is a good one. I like to say drink wine and get organized. So you know how if you go to the wine store and you get a case of wine, they're protecting 12 bottles of wine that are glass. So if they're going to be safe, most likely what you're going to put in there is going to be safe. So I use that for my Christmas ornaments. We celebrate Christmas. So, and I found a red box because I'm color coordinated and I'm visual. So I know as soon as I look at that box, ah, that has my Christmas ornaments. Now I don't store it in the garage because you don't want to store boxes, you know, in the attic or garage that are cardboard that can warp. But how can you get another reuse or upcycle something? Does that make sense? Yes, that's a brilliant idea. And just because I've talked about saving money, so when we downsized, I sold the boxes after we got everything unpacked. And that was a win-win because I had gotten like, so they got three, some of these boxes got three use, and I'm like, eh, I'm gonna make a little money from it too, but they just weren't thrown in the recycling bin. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd rather you throw it in the recycling bin than not at all, but can you get another use? Well, and I know for us, when we moved into our house, I took all of the boxes that we used for moving and I put an ad on next door and I said, does anybody want them? They're free, but we were done moving with them. And I just put them out at the end of the drive and within moments, they were just gone. <laughs> right. And next door and free cycle is also a great resource. If you Google free cycle and you put in your zip, then you can say, "Who? I'll put them out. Here's my address. Come and get them. Or Craigslist. Lots of options. All right. The next one, number three, is refuse. Again, showing my age here. But 
when I was younger, I don't remember disposable razors. Like you can get all those like those like face wipes, you know, like that come out instead of having a bar of soap or all the little samples like hotels have started to say, hey, we're not going to give you the free samples. And in, in the bathroom, they've started to install the big containers that they refill. So refuse like plastic bags, something really simple. A lot of times you can get a free bag at a giveaway. I know when I've done giveaways, I've done reusable totes. Keep them in your car. Something like three trillion plastic bags are consumed every single year. You know, in Europe, they charge you now. And they're starting in some places in the United States, and I think California, and I think someone told me the other day, Portland. If you want a bag, it's going to cost you a nickel. So refuse that. Refuse things that are overpackaged. And remember, demand change, because the people who produce the products are listening. Start to refuse things that have a ton of packaging that are one use only. Okay, we're on to number four, repurpose, which is one of my favorite things. And again, there are lots of fun ideas on Google and Pinterest. Like think about an ice cube tray. Probably not a lot of use because a lot of fridges automatically come with the ice makers now, but you can use it to hold jewelry. If you are someone that's very crafty, or you could use it if you're a painter, you know, to clean out, to do your watercolor, your oil painting. There are lots of things that you can do with that. You can do things like I have a vintage letter press. I don't know if you know what that is. In the olden days when they used to take do the printing and they'd have to pick out all the letters. I use that for essential oils. I got that tip from someone that I was following on Instagram. And then number six is repair. I feel like this can be challenging because I feel like many things made today, quite frankly, stink. They are going to break after the first use, but take the time to be, to repair. Now I'd say buy quality if you can. And again, if you are decluttering and thinking and being mindful of everything, you'd say, okay, you know what? I would rather have three pairs of quality shoes than 10 pairs that are going to fall apart next fashion season. So fix. If you can't fix it, see if someone else can. Patagonia, for example, has a take back program. So if you've ripped your Patagonia sweater, they have a place where you can drop it off and they're going to repair it and turn it into something new. Very important. And then number six is recycle. Set up a little bin. I have a bin right in the garage. Boom. It goes in, and then when it gets full, I take it outside. So I can't say, oh, it's raining. I can't recycle. It's too cold. Set yourself up for success. See if you can recycle food by composting. There's something like food waste in this country is ridiculous and how that ends up in the landfill. And again, now that it's being refused, where are we going to put it? Because everyone feel like, not in my backyard. I don't want a landfill there. So we're going to have to come up with creative solutions. I had for a long time a use it or lose it basket, and I worked with a young woman and I know didn't have a lot of money, was a single mother. And so I was like, I'm not wearing this blouse. Let me put it in there and give it to her. And I could feel good about it. She was grateful and it was a win-win. So being aware, like, what am I not using? And then giving it to someone else to bring joy into their life. I love that. And then I'm going to do a semi one here. I'm going to slip in return because we are talking about decluttering and organizing. And this is just an awareness. What do you have that's not yours? And this is more common than you think, whether it's returning the movie to Redbox, they still have those. I know Blockbuster's done. Returning books to the library, returning something you borrowed from your friend, returning your mother's robe that she wants to leave in your house and that you don't want her to have for when she visits. Whatever it is, return what isn't yours. And then my last one, number seven, is rethink, which I think is probably the most important. How can you, for example, give an experience instead of a gift. When you go on your next vacation, instead of getting a Chotsky that you're going to have to dust, can you have an experience? Can you do a tour? Can you volunteer when you're somewhere else? How do you shop? What are your use habits? Are you shopping when you're hungry and you notice you buy $500 of junk food, but then when you've just worked out and you have a full stomach and feeling good, do you buy healthier foods? And you're aware of that and your mindset. So just be, rethink everything and pay attention. Be aware when you have awareness plus action, that equals change. All right. Well, that is a lot of food for thought. And I know that you have some training programs. You have books, you have a podcast. Where can our listeners go to find you? If they go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com, they can find the podcast, a link there, which it's clear your clutter inside and out. And I just have to give a shout out to your team, Angela, from the moment that they contacted me. They are so professional. Your videos are so professionally edited. It's just your team's fantastic. But 
the podcast is there. You can find my books on Amazon. I have a 365 journal prompts clutter series book that I'm super excited about because when you declutter and get organized, you can share your gifts with the world. And I want to live in a world, you're passionate about cleaning, you're teaching other people how to clean. And it's just, when we share our gifts, we create an amazing world. And that was Julie Caraccio from Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie's seven R's of eco-organizing. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pick one of those and start today. Only one, pick one and start on it today. Do it for the next week. And then the following week, I want you to pick the next one and work your way through this list. And in just a couple of months, you will find yourself rethinking a completely different way about the belongings that you have in your house and how you shop and how you organize and how you get rid of stuff. So Julie, thank you so much for joining us today. This was fun as always, and I always learn so much. All right, if you found this helpful, please pass it on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.